For our next task, we need to delegate administration to other users for the different types of activities that that user may require on the server that we're now building. Now, this is a process that is actually can be kind of difficult to accomplish using the command line or with Windows PowerShell. So I'm going to focus our attention for this one on just the graphical way in which we can configure user rights assignment. That happens actually here in Server Manager. If I go up here under Tools to our local security policy, and we'll talk more about this local security policy uh, much later on in this learning path when we start talking about group policy. Because the configuration of security policy is one of those things that can be done on each individual server, but it's probably much easier delivered using group policy itself. There's Using group policy, you can create one policy that configures all the servers with the same local security policy. But at least at this point, let's take a look at down here under local policies, where we can configure what is called the user rights assignment. Now, this user rights assignment effectively determines which users and or groups would have the abilities to accomplish various tasks here on this machine. And the tasks are broken up into some extremely granular items, like uh, changing the system time, uh, changing the time zone, creating page files, and so on. And at least at, at this juncture, the only thing you really have to recognize is that for any of these configurations, like logging on locally or logging on over the network, accessing this computer from the network, it is possible for you to click here and then add in a user or group that would have the ability to accomplish the task. Anytime you're adding in these users or groups, at this point, not being in an Active Directory domain, the users and groups that you would add would be local to this machine. So we don't actually have any Active Directory domain users and groups that we can add until we get this machine into, uh, into the domain itself. Now, it is possible also to go about creating users and groups on this machine, even before you add this machine to the domain, by configuring those local users and groups. That happens here back under Tools and then under Computer Management. Here under Computer Management, we can take a look at the, uh, users, uh, the local users and groups node down here, which is where we would define whatever groups or whatever users that we believe should have access to log on to the server and to perform other tasks. By default, right out of the box, there are a variety of groups that are created already, like Hyper-V administrators, like backup operators, uh, like those for remote desktop services, that will already have permissions, well, privileges assigned over in user rights assessment. So you may have to take a look here at the different groups that are already pre-created for you and see if it's appropriate to just add that group to an existing user right or to create a new one if you see fit. Again, later on when we start getting into group policy and configuring security settings with group policy, there are ways within group policy to create a single policy that can be effective for more than one server at a time. Configuring these individually on each server can get a little overwhelming, particularly as the number of servers that you have to manage goes up.